Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you all are doing well. It's Ernest from Trip Astute. In this video, we're gonna be exploring the topic of skip lagging flights, which is booking a connecting flight with the intention of skipping the final leg. We'll discuss the risks and share some tips to keep in mind. A couple weeks ago, I asked on my community tab whether any of you have ever skipped lagged the flight. Less than 10% of you responded that you've done it, but over half of you responded that you've never even heard of it. So today, I wanna to talk about an air travel technique known as skip lagging. It's recently received a lot of press due to some airlines cracking down on passengers, so I thought it was relevant. Plus, we recently booked some flights that may require us to skip lag them unintentionally, so I wanted to share my personal experience. Before we get started, if you're new here, welcome to our channel. Trip Astute is a travel channel that is focused on sharing ways to make travel easier, affordable, and more enjoyable. Traveling can be stressful and expensive, so we're looking for ways to help you maximize your experience through travel tips, points of miles, and innovative gear. If that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing. Skip lagging is essentially booking a connecting flight with the intention of missing the final leg of the flight plan. You might be asking, why would anyone wanna do this? Well, it's usually due to cost. Sometimes you'll find flights that connect through your destination that are cheaper than simply booking a flight to that destination. It's a bit annoying since it really doesn't make any sense that a longer flight would be cheaper, but that's why some savvy travelers will use skip lagging in order to get a cheaper flight even though they essentially are abandoning and not using the final leg of their flight plan. For example, suppose you were to fly business class from Los Angeles to New York. If I were to look up direct flights this week on Delta, you would see that the cheapest flight that I could find is around $1,600. Pretty pricey. However, if I were to create a flight that stops in New York, but then continues to San Juan, Puerto Rico, you would only pay $610 for the same flight. You can see why someone might purchase this flight with the intention of skipping the final flight to San Juan in order to get the lower price. The airlines hate it when people skip lag, and rightfully so. Airlines will often try to keep the gate open as long as possible if they think passengers are trying to connect. This means wasted time and effort by the airlines. I imagine that it might cause confusion in their systems to have passengers who miss a flight as they probably assume that those passengers will still need to get to their final destination. There's also the ethical implications. I know that it bothers me that I might be causing a plane to leave late because they're keeping the gate open for my arrival. I have this image of them calling my name over and over in the airport and it's not a good feeling to know that I'm wasting other people's time. I hate it when people waste my time, so I can only imagine how gate agents would feel, as well as passengers who are sitting in the plane waiting for their departure. On the flip side, it's frustrating that the pricing for nonstop flights can be so expensive, and the fact that a lot of flights are overbooked makes a lot of people feel unsympathetic toward the airlines. Regardless of how you feel about the airlines, there have been a lot of stories lately of the airlines cracking down on passengers that skip lag. Specifically, United and Lufthansa have been in the news for suing passengers that were caught skip lagging. However, I did some digging into the stories and I found that the passengers who were sued were regular skip laggers, which means that the airline had a record of them doing it many times in the past. To be honest, I was a bit nervous when I read the article since we booked a Delta flight from Burbank, California to Glacier Park International Airport in Montana that stopped in Salt Lake City. We decided later on to change the starting location of our trip to Salt Lake City, so skip lagging was one of the options since we didn't want to pay the cancellation fee. Ironically, we called Delta last weekend to discuss the situation. We told them that we needed to go to Salt Lake City instead of Glacier Park and that we would like to cancel the last leg of our flight. Delta said that they would need to charge us $150 per ticket to make the change. We asked if they could waive the fee, especially since we were essentially giving them the ability to earn more revenue by booking the seats to other passengers on the final leg of our trip. After going back and forth on the fee, the representative told us that it might be better for us to skip the last flight. Yeah, the Delta rep advised us to skip lag. So it's a tough call. I don't recommend anyone doing it if you can avoid it since it's generally against the terms and conditions of the airlines. However, I also don't know how an airline can enforce the rule unless you're someone who has a pattern of doing it. For example, there might be legitimate reasons why someone might skip a flight. Maybe you feel sick, maybe there's an emergency that requires you to fly back home, or a work situation that causes you to miss a connection or redirect your travel to another location. I don't think it's a good long-term strategy for travelers. Since the airlines track your flight history, it makes sense that they are cracking down on people who they can argue are intentionally doing it and abusing the system. Now that I've told you the risks and recommended that you avoid skip lagging, I should mention that there is a website dedicated to helping you find flights that take advantage of this loophole. It's called skiplagged.com and it's basically a flight search engine that looks for flights with connections as a final destination that might be cheaper 
cheaper than non-stop flights. The company has been sued by United and Orbitz, but has managed to survive. From what I've read, they've won based on a technicality since the company is based in New York and the lawsuit was filed in Chicago. I'm guessing this won't be the last legal challenge that they face, so be careful if you intend to use the site to book a connecting flight with the intention of skip lagging. If you decide you need or want to skip lag a flight, here are a couple things that you should keep in mind. Number one, avoid multi-city round trip flights. If you don't complete your flight plan, then the rest of your reservation is usually canceled. This is important if you booked your return flight on the same reservation. Just know that the default for the airlines is to cancel your reservation if you don't complete it. So if you need to book a flight home, you wanna do it on a separate one-way reservation. Number two, don't expect award miles. Like number one, canceling your flight plan can cause you to lose miles on the entire itinerary. It's not a definite outcome that you won't get miles for at least the portion that you traveled, but it seems like folks online have mixed experiences when it comes to getting their loyalty miles. Number three, avoid check-in baggage. This one is probably obvious, but you definitely do not want to have to check in a bag if you're planning to skip lag. This is because your bag will likely get transferred automatically and end up at the final destination of your travel itinerary. Also, I recommend keeping your carry-on bag small, preferably small enough to fit underneath your seat. The reason being is that sometimes the overhead bins get full and the airlines will force you to gate check your bag. Keeping your carry-on bag small reduces the risk of that situation since you can fit it underneath the seat if necessary. Number four, don't tell the airlines that you intend to skip the final flight. While we broke this rule, I generally don't recommend that you disclose that you plan to skip a flight. From my experience, the airlines will not try to accommodate your situation, so it's probably better to do it without telling them. Number five, monitor any flight changes. I've had situations where my connection changed, especially when I booked the ticket so far in advance. The flight was still gonna to go to the final destination, but the connection point was different due to a flight cancellation. If this happens on a skip lag flight, I recommend that you request a refund for the flight if it's possible. It doesn't happen often, but it is a risk that you take if you are skip lagging. Number six, schedule flights with a long stopover. Similar to the previous tip, having a longer stopover reduces the risk that your entire flight plan will change. The airline will likely try to get you to your stopover location since it means one less flight that they have to adjust in the event of a flight cancellation or rebooking. Number seven, avoid skip lagging international flights. Since airlines are usually required to verify whether a passenger has a valid visa before checking in or boarding an international flight, it can cause all kinds of issues if you plan to miss your final leg. I suppose you could get a visa for both destinations if it's necessary, but it does seem a bit risky. I personally wouldn't do it, especially since I wouldn't want to have to answer questions from customs and immigration officials if they somehow investigated my original flight plan and noticed that I skipped. Some countries are sensitive about onward travel plans as well, so you want to be especially careful about showing your intention to leave the country. Though in my head, if an official were to find out that you broke your arrival flight plan, I would worry that they might suspect that I might do the same with my departure. Just something to consider if you plan to go this route. Number eight, don't overdo it. As I mentioned earlier, those that have gotten in trouble with the airlines are folks that have a habit of missing their flights. That data is trackable and it's not worth being flagged by the airlines. I wouldn't be surprised if it came up during a global entry interview as well as a potential issue during a background check. At the end of the day, I think that skip lagging presents a lot of risks for travelers. There are a lot of logistical issues that can come up, whether it's flight changes, visas, or baggage. I think the risk that your trip could be completely derailed is much higher when skip lagging. There's also a risk of losing your points because the airlines crack down on you and close your account. For those of us in the points and miles hobby, especially those of you with a lot of airline miles and status, this could be especially painful and devastating. Of course, I wish the airlines would make more effort to price their flights in a way that doesn't encourage people to have to use this method to save money. The source of the issue is the pricing of the tickets, so I think it's in their interest to find ways to make pricing more reasonable and competitive to discourage people from having to search for alternative bookings. What do you all think of skip lagging? Have you ever done it? Please let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please give us a thumbs up and consider sharing our video with others who might benefit from our content. It really helps us with growing our channel and our community. Until next time, travel safe and travel smart.